I was born in Ponca City, Oklahoma. It's an oil town. It's the home of Conoco, what is now Conoco Oil Company. It was an unusual town. It was small on the Kansas border, right out in the middle of the prairie, but also in the middle of the oil fields. And as Conoco developed as a company, it brought together all of its research and development in this little community. So we had the advantage of being almost rural, but also out in front in terms of scientists and thinkers. And they brought their culture with them. I found my way to the piano at the age of seven. I wanted to play the drums like all little boys. I wanted to make a lot of racket. Uh, my mother told me that I was not going to play the drums until I played the piano. And after six months of negotiation, and I, I could tell I was not going to win, so I chose to take the piano lessons, and in two hours I was hooked. So I continued to play all the way through high school, Just decided when I was about 15 that I really did need to do this. Um, and having practiced already at a fairly serious pace, it was a moment in time when I when I made the move to being a pianist and being a musician. In some ways it was almost unconscious, but I do remember several moments in time when I heard some of the big pieces of the literature. Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto was one of the pieces that struck me as an absolutely majestic mountain that I had to climb. So in the process of learning the piano, I had a rather natural evolution. I had a wonderful teacher when I was young. She was, she was kind and she was encouraging. And as I got better, uh, she was able to begin to introduce discipline, but she left town. And I was 12 years old and I moved on to the second teacher who was far more demanding. It's actually, in the, in the life of music students, this is a, a really, really wonderful progression from someone who is nurturing and kind to the next person who is a little more strict and then finally to someone who demands the most of you. So I had this progression and it was quite, quite natural and quite wonderful. So my second teacher said to me, if you really want to do this, you have to go to New York. And I accepted her her projection. Uh, I went to Southern Methodist as an undergraduate and then on to New York to study with Robert Goldsand at the Manhattan School of Music. So it was a, it was a kind of a, 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 like all of our musicians here at the New World Symphony, you move through this period when you're introduced to the music and it captures your imagination. And then you begin to be known as someone who can do the work and who can make, can turn the printed page into an expression, who can make the magic. And then all of a sudden you say, this is something that I have to do, not just today, but for a very long time. We're all seduced by it, we're all pulled into it, and then we live the rest of our lives. So that was my moment.